email you can share. And then we're also passing a sign in sheet around, so just make sure you get that. Okay. Who have an I can name tag to? And what's your name? I'm Dylan. Dylan. McDowell? And then what's your name? Chris. Chris. If you guys want her squished, you can pull up this table a little more and sit at that. Up to you. Just if you want to have a table. All right, well, I think we'll get started and people can relate them. That's good to you. Yes, and they can find their own. Y'all did, but I'm Haley, and then in the back we've got Rob and Josh, and they're going to talk today and introduce themselves. I'm sure. So, and if you didn't see the Wi-Fi password, it's E Center zero one zero two zero three. Okay. So first things first, we're going to get to know each other a bit. This is always the fun part. So this is what we do here. We don't change this normal. We go around the room, talk. We do something called greeting through the grapevine. Has anybody done that before? Okay, so this is how it works. So let's say it's me and Jeremy. I don't have any time for your name tag. Okay, so we would talk and we would introduce ourselves. And right now, I'm pretending I'm Josephine. So I'd introduce myself and we'll answer four questions that we'll go through. And then at, when time's up, we switch name tags. And so I go to the next person and I introduce myself as Jeremy, repeating what he told me. And then at the end of this, whoever's name tag you're holding, that's who you have to stand up and introduce to the group. And then that person will say if you got it right or if you got it wrong. And we will judge you if you get it wrong. So I hope you all have really good memories. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Let's start on this side. Okay. So these are the questions we're going to do today. We're going to do name, major, what you want to do, job, something, and then something unique about you. Don't do something lame, like do something that's really interesting. It'll also help uh, your partner to remember. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I think we're going to try and do this pretty quick. So let's say like three minutes per meeting here. So ready, start. Feel free to stand up and walk around. It's kind of squished. So. <laughs> So I'm Brad. Well, I can tell you about it. 
Dean, you get to go first. So you can go ahead and stand up and introduce your Okay, so Jacob, right? So you get to go first. Okay, you can go ahead and stand up and introduce Yeah. Okay, so Jacob, right? So you get to go first. Okay, you can go ahead and stand up and introduce Yeah. Okay, so Jacob, right? So you get to go Okay, so we get right. So we get to the So we get to the first. Okay, so we get right. So we get to the first. So we get to the first. Okay, so we get right. So we get to the first. So we get to the first. Okay, so we get right. So we get to the first. So we get to the first. Okay, so we get right. So we get to the first. So we get to the first. Okay, so we get right. So we get to the first. So we get to the first. Okay, so we get right. I'm <laughs> 
economics. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, economics. And then you want to be an economic consultant? Uh, no. Uh, I want to go into quantitative finance. Quantitative oh, wow. trading. I what is that? Quantitative? It's, yeah, computational okay. finance. Okay. And then you like cooking. Yes. Okay, I got the What's your favorite recipe right now? I've been making this really good, like, bagel sandwich type thing. I use, like, like this, like, aged mozzarella with, like, dried out salmon and avocado. Yeah. I only, I don't like cooking, like, all the time. Just, like, every once in a while, I'll find, like, a cool recipe. Okay. And I like doing that, like, making it look all nice. So know? we shouldn't show up to your apartment expecting No, 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 I'm not, you know, I can't do, you know, Sorry, pass all nothing. So. <laughs> <laughs> So I have Leo, Lita, and that's the only thing I remember. But <laughs> um, I think you're a business major. Yeah, that's very broad. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, I don't, I don't really remember anything else. Sorry. Uh, it's not your fault. You got like, like that's the third ten or four hundred dollar inflation. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my major is business management, university in finance, and we can switch it to CIT, company called Data Collection. I just heard this one. So. Anyways, my career goal is to be a consulting, being a consulting company, doing whatever the consulting is. And something mm -hmm. unique about me is I love to study philosophy and history. It's just my passion. Mm -hmm. So I got interrupted. Did you, uh, where are you from? Taiwan. Okay, so I have Chris Cook. All I know is that he's a modern dance major. <laughs> he wants to be like a YouTube star, and he owns over was it fifty dogs or something? No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a business finance major. I want to do something with um, finance consulting, and I. I make music every now and then. Okay, I have Alexis Hopkins. So she's a finance major. For business. Sorry. Career goals. The person I talked to didn't know your career goals, so I'm sure they're All business. All business. Okay. It's something unique is your name is like the car Lexus. So I spoke with by proxy to Mark Allen, and he told me he is a business management major, yeah, supply, chain. Uh, supply chain, and he wants to work for eBay, and that is concurrently his unique thing about him. I wasn't told the unique thing about him. I think for my unique thing, I said I can't do it. And uh, yeah, Mark Allen. Go Jeremy. And uh, all I remember is that you can find my So, what's <laughs> up? Uh, career goal I want to work with budgets. And something unique, I want to see the lizard at the dinner. Oh, wow. Like, what kind of a lizard? Gecko? Um, or a dragon? I don't know what it was. It was like this big. I don't know what kind it was. So Cooked or uncooked? We tried it. And it was totally burned. Okay. He is a sociology major, and I wasn't informed of any career goals. Uh, he has a law enforcement or some research-based career. Something unique about doing that. That was.
Something with production? Um, I want to do brand management or product management because I want to help roll out new products that are coming out. And you have a garden. I do. I'm obsessed with the full herb garden that I have. So. And I'm from um, Tennessee. Do we have to say that? No. Never mind. We're glad for the extra. Okay, there you go. Hey, good talk, everybody. See, that's more fun than normal ones. Okay, so next up is Josh, so I'm going to get out of the way and let him come up, and then you guys can exchange your name tags with that.
I'm wondering this because I'm passionate about analyzing situations and things, and then working with a team of people to come up with specific action plans to improve those things um, and to bring about better results. So, like next slide, because I do that a lot with patients and clients and things like that. Uh, but I also love business and, and working in that environment. Great. I, I know that uh, Brother Kimball's been pushing really hard to get business as a part of the exercise physiology papers. It's good. good to see the results. Anybody else? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, given as much time as I have left, I just want to provide myself with as many opportunities to gain experience in the field of business and the field of analytics, providing uh, important indicators to people who need them and uh, figure by you know taking this opportunity and other ones that come my way, they'll prop me for a, a good future career. Yeah. Um, so definitely also for the experience and I think the employability afterwards, having that experience, and then also of course because uh, I think it's a part of that. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Excellent. I'm trying it out mm -hmm. so that, just to kind of see like. You just broaden my horizons, I guess. Like just checking out the research and business field to see if it's something that I like to do. Good. Do I have any info? Not quite any advertisement before, but I discovered research part of it. Mm -hmm. so I wanted to try it out before I did last semester when I came here, and I was just intrigued about the the different ways we analyze things, the different ways the companies communicate with the client. So this year. Anybody else? Yeah, okay. I think I've learned a lot in school and I think what I'm hoping for is this internship to kind of help navigate me to what I am wanting to do as a career. I think um, there's a lot that I like, but I think first hand and like hand on experience. Okay, well, the rest of you, I'm just glad you're here. If you have no meaning, <laughs> no plans for a future or anything like that. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, but no, I, my assignment today is talk to you a little bit about the mission of the uh, RVDC. And so, what do you think it is? Well, it's uh, doing some research for other businesses that need uh, help or ask for our help, research and development. Okay, it makes sense. <laughs> it's research business. Yes, those two words are key components. Anybody else? Now, some of you've been here before, right? Raise your hand if you've worked either as a as a junior analyst. Okay, one, two. So you're the only two. I think. Uh, did you reach out to me on uh, LinkedIn? Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. <laughs> just today, I think I accepted. I had to do background research, and no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but th th that's as well. Uh, the, the key component, you know, what what we do. And, and maybe what I can help you with. Um, we do all the things that you talk about in terms of research. But there's more to us than research. There, there are other things, but you may find that you're spending a lot of your time doing that. Uh, in the future, when where we're headed and the directions where the, the center is going, it's, it could be all kinds of projects that, uh, that maybe there are some works that a client may need to have done that they just can't do themselves, like web design to uh, even figuring out a marketing analysis or where they should go in terms of their marketing or uh, what does this financial, all this financial stuff tell me, you know, analytic parts that need to be in there. I, but I think a lot of you will probably spend some of your time in research. Um, Joshua Holt, uh, I, I've been at BYU Idaho for uh, over 36 years and um, I will retire in December and 
and this will be my retirement gig for a little while. <laughs> as long as we can keep uh, the lights on and the doors open, we're good. I'll, I'll have a little bit of time. Uh, and so they've asked me to be, become the executive director. Their previous director was called the commission president. Trust me, this job is a lot easier than his job. So uh, right now, but the key is, is that I taught in the business management department all those years, done all kinds of things background-wise. In fact, Dylan, where did we go? Do were you the New York trip? Yeah. yeah. Took you to New York. Took you to Wall Street. Well, <laughs> the financial area, and you got to see all of those as well. And Tori, what, what is it? I you see. Retail management. Retail management. Yeah. I can't remember. I had to put it in there. That's good. All right. As well. Uh, so diverse in lots of different things. Why did this? Nine years ago, this institution was, I guess, roughly nine years ago. I haven't had a third month date, you know, like when's our first month of existence. But uh, a group of one, uh, entrepreneurs, very interested in creating an entrepreneurial center on campus, came to President Clark. And uh, in that process, what he, um, he didn't really want to create a center on campus. So what they did is they did look and did some research, went out and recruited a service missionary called Bob LaPierre, who uh, was the founder, actually. He created this, and believe it or not, his mission service was seven years. So think about your two and then add a few more. But uh, of course, he had to live in Rexburg for seven years from being from Arizona. So, you know, what a thrill to us to have to live January, February. But uh, founded this, and then in that process, it grew and expanded, and we've hired some staff. We have uh, uh, four uh, full-time employees that are here permanently with the, uh, set, uh, the center, and so that you know that. Rob Tonks back there is one of those staff. And then um, Yomi Will, who's uh, not here today, and he, he'll be in and out this week. Well, hopefully you'll get to see him, but he had the death in the family. And we don't know his wife's supposed to have a baby this week. So we're hoping it all comes together and works out well uh, for him as well. And he's going to be, he's the director over this program that you're going to deal with. Okay. So anyway, they founded it, and over the time they built and developed to, to the stage of where you're at today. It was founded on an idea that if we could get uh, an opportunity for students to get some internships, and that's what most of you are here for, right? How many are doing it because you need an internship, right? That's the only reason you're here, right? <laughs> um, but with that in mind, that then you're going to have a responsibility as an intern, and we're going to have a group of students that you're going to work with, and you're going to manage, and you're going to have to give some direction to. And guidelines with that. So what is our mission? Believe it or not, originally when it was first started, it was more to help clients, help economic development within Eastern Idaho and those changes. And we've gone through, uh, if anybody understands pivoting, we've actually gone through some pivoting and some changes that are taking place at the institution to where we are, if we were to look at our mission, it's to enhance higher learning. So our, our whole role as a nonprofit is built upon usage of students, okay? And we are partnering with the university uh, to be a nonprofit entity and yet be a partner with them in providing student opportunity projects, what we call applied learning projects. And so what our job is to go out and find clients and in that process, then we bring people like yourselves on some of the projects as interns, and, and then you'll lead a group of students. And we're gonna be doing some introductions, and so you might run into some other students, which we call ALPS students. ALPS students, which are uh, applied learning projects. The S is the S and the project piece, but you know, marketers don't care about that. 
they do it right or wrong. Okay, uh, and so ALPS is something we're working with the university and proceeding and with our goals, um, the goals are us as a center is to help develop and find clients who need work to be done and we will take them on and we'll have students from all over campus, all over the world, online students, whatever they may be, to give them an opportunity to put something on their resume. Now, what I want to stress to you is, um, I've, I've uh, traveled a lot of places and, and I've taken students to a lot of places. How strong is your resume? Good? Okay, so part of what we do, part of what we do is part of our mission is to give you opportunities to strengthen your resume. Put one more little uh, notch on your resume that will allow you to be hopefully better qualified, more employable in what you have to do with as well. Now, the key component that I want to stress to you is that someone's going to give you, this client is going to give you a client name. Now, if you're going to end up putting it on a resume, what would you want the client to say? if they were to call up this client to see how well you did it. Really good things. So you, you need to know and understand that you have a lot of responsibility in this. Are you alone? Are you left alone? You know, you're going to have some other people that you're going to work with. Can I just encourage you one thing that I hope that you would do? is that you would treat this like you have a team and you use them as a team just like you would want to be used on a team and you feel like you need their help and they need your help and even more importantly that the more active participating you allow these individuals to help you by communicating, explaining what's going on, not leaving in the dark, and don't ever think that they're just hired help for you and your successful internship experience. Does that make sense? That if you look at them as a team, and then, you know what? People will rise and you'll help each other, you'll be effective. And even more importantly, you need to know that the client is expecting something in return. And, um, we assume by your acceptance of this opportunity that you're going to work pretty hard to make this happen. And at the end, you're going to have something to deliver to that client, hopefully in, in line with what they wanted or a scope of work that they needed to have done. At the end of that experience, hopefully all of you, it's going to be a win-win, right? The client wins, you win. More than that, can I suggest to you, you've now added another person or another individual um, to what we call a mentor. And if you do this project well, it can be one of the, one of the best experiences you have while you're here in school, okay? And it will probably add more marketability to you. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share with you my TA. My TA, she, uh, she's not working for me now because she graduated, but she's from Albania. And uh, she was a 499 student. And the only reason I pay attention is because she was working for me. And I, had, I was not the director of the, uh, of the RBDC when I gathered this information. And as, as a 499 student working with interns like yourself, she had a terrible, terrible, terrible experience and hated every minute of it. And then we took her back to New York City to J.P. Morgan and a man by the name of Robert Hawks. Robert Hawks was a former intern here at the RBDC and he told her that she needed to get some more finance or evidence of leadership and 
uh, management on her resume. And so he told her she needed to come back to the RDBC and apply to become an intern. And I said to her, I said, Carolina, what were you thinking? You hated your experience. Why are you going to go be an intern? Well, Robert says that's what I really need to do because it helped Robert Hawks, who is an economics major, get his start at J.P. Morgan. And now he's in investment banking. Uh, so uh, and he's been with them, what, five years, six years with J.P. Morgan. So Darlena came and she was an intern here. Darlena thought that was the greatest experience that she had. She loved it. It was a wonderful experience. Loved her client. Loved working with her team. So how come you can have two different views on the same kinds of experience? How could she have? Because it was polar, wasn't it? Right? The people that you work with. Okay, the people you work with. What uh, the type of work that you put in, your attitude with the work that you put in. Okay. Uh, you know, attitude as well. Attitude. Uh, realistic expectations. <clears throat> Not really sure. I won't ask those questions about what happened to my first internship experience. Just, she kind of sometimes felt like. Her intern only wanted her to sit on the corner and count cars. That explains I mean, definitely those job title, the job that she was doing, and probably the team that she was working with was in college, and now she was in that alone beside. So, in research, do you have to count cars? Sometimes. Sometimes. Sometimes there's a lot of grunt work. True. So how it's, it's really how you manage those individuals you have. Sure, I don't think anyone's afraid of the grunt work, but if that's all you get to do. So what am I trying to tell you here today? It's not always fun. It's not always fun. Well, I would say what I've got you said is that being in a leadership position or even just a position in a team because everyone is a leader in a team um, it's important to create a good environment for your team and to communicate well with others and to give opportunities to other people to grow so learn to delegate and not hold on to everything and try to control everything but allow people to learn and grow into these things so. excellent yeah i was going to say there's a line in a book i read that said uh, there's no bad teams, only bad leaders. Um, and I feel like that's true in every aspect that I've ever been a part of a team is that, uh, you know, you can't really say, oh, I have this, you know, this one person, they're bad on my team, so my entire team's bad. It's the, it's the leader's job and our position as leaders to build up our team to make a, to make a good product. Right. Uh, I would add to that, um, share the work, not just let one person do all the work and have a person who or whatever. Can, can I add uh, and share the glory? Okay. You know, I, I put that in as a middle note that um, this isn't all about you. Okay. And if, if you're going to do well at it, you, you'll find that you have to have those resources. You have to have those individuals to make it work. And it, it will be a great, great opportunity for you in terms of that as well. Um, and the last piece that I, I would suggest to you is this. Those individuals that you get, most of them are choosing to do this. They're not getting internships. Why are they doing this? They're not interns like you. They want Mark first. Then we'll yeah. have you. Well, I I mean I'm one of those. Um, this is not obviously aligned with my um, 
Absolutely. <laughs> so to me, it's because I really want to. I'm really passionate about these things, and I, and I want to learn, and I want to participate in something like this and, and be involved and, and do something because I'm interested in how Okay. And, and they realize. You know, I, I don't know how over the years, all these years, and all the trips, and all the places I've taken students, and all the resumes, and working with them on their resumes. And I've seen a lot of quality resumes, and I've seen a lot of resumes where we'll go to New York and we'll be sitting in a, someone, say, an analyst or someone like that, and they're talking to the students, and and then somebody will ask, well, well, how should we, what should we put on our resumes? What would be the most important thing? And all the students have their resumes on the table. And then as they're talking about what they look for in resumes, I started to watch the group and slowly I just saw students just kind of slide their paper and slid it underneath the table and the reaction was, hey, well, can I send that to you? <laughs> right? Can I send that to you? So what you have is I cannot sell enough. If you do this experience well and you manage and you work with that client, and you really dig to find out what the client wants because believe it or not sometimes they don't always know they think they do and you might be struggling with that a little bit but if you do a really really good job what are some of the things besides the knowledge you gain it's probably you now have a person who's willing to write you a resume uh, a letter of recommendation so Think of all the positives of what good work will do for you. And think about all the things that, if you don't do your job well, could also happen, okay? Because maybe they won't give you permission to use their name on their, your resume, okay? And it should be kind of their choice to be able to do that as well. All right. Do you have any questions for me? an intern here. I was a junior analyst and I had at times frustrating but an amazing experience and on particularly something that you guys may not know is that the clients pay for these projects. Um, $3,500. So these are not for free. So the quality of your work needs to be up to the price that these projects are. And Jack will talk about that more when he gives a presentation on a different day. But um, in my experience, at the end of my project, when I delivered our final consultation to the client, I could say with confidence that my project was worth at least $10,000. So knowing that, coming in, no experience, I was a political science major, felt kind of out of my element here with all the business kids. Um, but at the end, with help here, with your teams, and with your own hard work, you are going to gain so much from this. You will learn more from this than probably any class that you take. So be excited. This is a really, really great opportunity. So with that, I think what we're going to do next is we're going to take a tour, and then we're going to take a break. So really quickly, who is a junior analyst that didn't get a W-9? Okay. Okay. And then you don't have to obviously fill that out right this second, but I just need him by the end of the day. Okay, I'll have to get one more for you. Could you introduce Phil Fuller? And then back here we've got Jack Fuller. Some of you guys might know him. Do you want to introduce yourself really quick? Yeah. Hi. I'm Jack Fuller, Boulder Fuller on campus. I teach um, finance, business stuff, and I've been here at Beacon about five years. So the university said five years ago, I want to spend about half time just working with the project. So I get the blessing of not having to teach all day. I don't know if I can do a teacher all day. I'm not like a professional teacher. But I get the chance to be here with you guys. So I'll be working with you. And right. he's he's actually uh, had the uh, students do projects for him. So yeah, he's very so experienced on both sides. In Phoenix, uh, I started and you guys did great work. It was pretty risky for me to write a check and say, look, my company can take the project, but we did great. And you guys are definitely worth it. And Haley is under exaggerated. I know the project too, but we should keep it in charge 20,000. That's what I said. Now, when you deliver, you deliver good. And